Hi everyone, this video hopefully will make it clearer how improbability and almost sure convergence differ. So the theorem we're proving is the following theorem. It has two parts. Part A, xn converges to x almost surely if and only if the following happens for every epsilon positive the probability that the supremum k at least m <coughs> xk minus x larger than equal to epsilon goes to zero as n goes to infinity okay now before i go any further let me compare this to the original definition of uh, improbability convergence for every epsilon the probability that xm minus x larger than epsilon goes to zero. The only change I made here is to add in the supremum. So instead of probability xk minus x larger than epsilon, I have the supremum in k at least n. And if that goes to zero, that's exactly the case when I have almost sure convergence. So that's how you can boost improbability convergence to almost sure, adding in this little supremum here in front. And part B is very similar. It, uh, it tells about Cauchy sequences, which is, of course, it is the same in uh, real numbers. So Xn is Cauchy if and only if, well, almost surely Cauchy. Xn is almost surely Cauchy if and only if for every positive epsilon. And the expression I'm going to put here is very similar. Take the supremum of Xk minus xl, and that's bigger than epsilon for k and l indices at least n. So the condition is that this goes to zero with n. That's exactly when I have an almost surely Cauchy sequence. Okay, so that's part b of the theorem. I'm going to prove part a. I'm going to prove part a. Part b is similar and I'm not doing it here. And the proof starts with the following events. A, K, M, for K and M positive uh, integers, is defined to be the event that X, K minus X in mod is at least 1 over M. So X, K differs from X by 1 over M at least. That's the event A, K, M. That's a, an event which my, might or might not happen. I'm also going to look at the limb soup of these events in K. So the limb soup was the intersection of the union of the tails, K at least N, of the A, M, K. It's a limb soup in K. And everybody hopefully remembers that limb soup means that this event happens infinitely often in the index K. So there's going to be infinitely many of these random variables xk which differ from the limit x by at least 1 over m. That is the event am, or the limb soup of the events. And now I want to look at uh, my left hand side. And I want to start a chain on, of equivalences. So on the left hand side I want to formulate that xn goes to x almost surely. Which means that the probability of xn going to x is 1. I want to formulate this in the reversed way. I'm going to say that that's equivalent to non-convergence having probability 0. So there's 0 probability that xn does not converge to x. Okay. Now what is this event that xn does not converge to x? It means that for every epsilon, uh, no, that there is at least one epsilon, sorry, there is at least one epsilon, so that x k and x differs from it, differ from each other by at least that epsilon for infinitely many index, indices k. So I claim that if I look at this limb soup, that's almost the same thing. The limb soup of the AKM say that, at that infinitely often x k differs from x by at least 1 over m. If this is true for any m, no matter how large, which means no matter how small 1 over m is. If this is true for any m, 
then that means that infinitely often xk and x differ by more than 1 over m for some m, and that's exactly when I have non-convergence. Remember, union means at least 1. So there is at least 1m, no matter how large, which means no matter how small 1 over m is, at least 1m so that xk and x differs by 1 over m infinitely many times, infinitely often. Okay? That's non-convergence. So non-convergence having zero probabilities is the same as this union having zero probability. Now, a union has zero probability if and only if all of its members have zero probability. Okay? So that's equivalent to every m, probability a m equals to zero. For every m, probability a m is zero. If the union has a zero probability, that of course bounds each of the a m's in probability, so each of these is zero. If each of the a m's have zero probability, then of course the union will have zero probability just by the definition of a measure and the unions. Okay, so xn going to x almost surely is now equivalent to the probability of a m equals to zero for every m. Now what is the probability of a m? The probability of a m is the intersection of this union. So for every m, we have that the, so all this is equivalent, that for every m we have that the probability of the intersection n from 1 to infinity union k at least n a m k is 0. Okay, now remember from the limb soup that the union of more and more events is decreasing. This is decreasing in n, all right? Uh, decreasing events, if I take the intersection of that, that's also called the limit of the events, and that actually swaps with the probability. So this is further equivalent to the limit of the probabilities, as n goes to infinity, of the union k at least n, a m k equals to zero, and this is true for every m still. So let me add here every m, we have that still. All right, so the left-hand side, xn going to x almost surely, is now equivalent to this limit equals to zero for every m. Now what does that mean? What does that mean? What is that union? The union, again, means at least one. So we have at least one of the k's, at least one of the k's have this a m k event occurring at least one at least one okay at least one at least one of the k's have this occurring which means that at the largest of these guys k is of course at least n the largest of these differences is larger than or equal to m. So that's equivalent to the following, that the limit n goes to infinity, okay? So a k m, at least one of the k's sees that event here, which means that the largest of these numbers in k, so I'm going to add the supremum here, the largest of these numbers, x k minus x, in k, but which k? Well, k is only allowed to be at least n. So for all m still, for all m's, the largest of the these uh, differences, xk minus x, exceeds 1 over m. And that's exactly the right-hand side. So for every epsilon, the largest of these things uh, going to the largest of these things exceeding epsilon goes to zero in probability for every epsilon. The oops, you don't see that guy. So let me show you this top here, this top formula here. So for every epsilon, the largest of these differences being bigger than epsilon goes to zero. That's exactly what we have here. For every epsilon, instead of epsilon, we have it for every m and epsilon is replaced by 1 over m. So for every m, 
the largest of these differences bigger than 1 over m goes to 0. This limit is of course still 0. And that's the end of the proof for part A, which has got to the right hand side of part A. I'm not going to tell you much about part B, just a short uh, remark here about part B. If you want to do part B, proof of part B is similar with the events is similar with the events B, M, and then these guys will have double indices down there, being XK minus XL is larger than 1 over M. Okay, I'm not going to give you the details here, it's a very similar proof. Um, use these events instead of the events A, K as above.